to the Kemetic How-To Guide for Egyptian Pagan and Kemetic Practitioners. I'm your host, Sharon, and happy 2022! We are kicking off our 12th year of production, and we're starting off with a viewer request. That is to revisit my very first topic, which is how to play a sistra. I'm also going to throw in uh, my second topic, and we're going to revisit that, being ritual gestures and demonstrating how to do them. And this time, I have volunteers. So, let's kick off another year of the Comedic How-To Guide, shall we? First off, when it comes to systems, a basic question that you might be asking is, where do I find one? You can sometimes find them online, and usually they're made out of cast resin like this one here. Uh, I bought this one at a store in Dallas um, called Little Egypt. You can actually find them on Etsy. Their store name is D Egypt because the owner's name is Dee Dee. And uh, these typically cost around 50 US dollars, give or take 10 bucks. And uh, there are other kinds of cast resin that you can sometimes find. A good place that you can look for them also uh, is on uh, these really arcane things called print catalogs for places like Sacred Source. They will also sometimes carry systems. Now, in 2010, I bought this systrum on eBay. This one is directly from Ethiopia. It is uh, the same as the ones that are used in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, uh, because they still use systrums just like the Coptic Orthodox Church does. Uh, this one is a little unique, though, because it's all metal, and the handle is a spent 50 caliber cartridge. Uh, or technically the Russian equivalent of 50 caliber. Uh, just to give you an idea of scale, this is the jacket that held the gunpowder. The bullet would have been here. And because there's a dent in it, we know this, this shell was fired. So talk about turning swords into plowshares. Uh, notice that the jingles for this are made of flat metal as opposed to the jingles on other systems which are made from basically tambourine jingles. You'll, and the microphone should be able to pick it up. You get a very different sound from each one of them. This is probably closer to the sound of ancient systems because the ancient Egyptians didn't have a way to mass-produce uh, tambourine jingles like we do. They used cut squares of metal like this. And actually, if you happen to go to the Tutankhamun and the uh, Golden Age of the Pharaohs exhibit in the late double aughts, uh, they actually had an example of a sistrum that was made um, very simply because uh, it came from Amarna, so it didn't have, you know, Hathor heads on it, but uh, it used jingles sort of like this. And that actually is what inspired me to make my own. I saw that one and I said, oh, uh, I bet I could make this. So this is my sistrum, inspired by the one from the Tut exhibit. Although in this case I used tambourine jingles. Over the years I have used various materials for the jingles in these, including cut metal like that, uh, these jingles. Some books will also mention using washers, metal washers, and I have used some of those in the past. I saved a few of them. I've got them on this paintbrush. Notice that they don't give as much of a sound, and even if they were jingling against metal. They're not nearly as responsive as these guys. So over the years I've found that these give you a much better sound. Now if you want to know how I made this sistrum, I give directions in Following the Sun. That's one of the a little uh, how-tos that uh, is actually in the book. And what I love with the videos is I can supplement it with not only a great visual, but 
sound from the finished product. So I've already demonstrated a little bit for you just in this video how uh, you actually play the Sistrum, but to explain in a little bit more depth and give you kind of a step-by-step -step so that you know you can see how easy it really is to do and also how easy it is to kind of overthink it, let's get our victims, I mean volunteers. Okay, so Shaking a Sistrum, it's, you, yeah, it's very light. You, it, the, the first time I did this video, uh, I had seen another video on YouTube where somebody had one, they were like shaking it like a gavel two-handed, and I thought, whoa, you, you, you don't need to go that hard, because if you just, you know, with a little flick of the wrist, go ahead. You don't even have to do it very hard, and, and it gives you... Hey, wait. That one has a different sound from this one. What did you just do? You, yeah, okay. Cool. Now, somebody in the comments for my original video had suggested taking it and, I guess, doing like this. But it doesn't give you... Yeah, if, if you... Kind of, kind of like uh, uh, in Karate Kid 2 with the... Right. It's the, not a drum. Right. But it is a percussion instrument. Right, but it's it's not, I mean, you can't sit there and, you know, that's not going to work. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's how not to play a sister. But yeah, if, if you just do it like that, you get a much better sound. Now, uh, now, that, <laughs> now, now that I've shown you the basics of how you play it, uh, the, uh, the ancient writers described a particular rhythm, which may have been something that was done, you know, in uh, religious processions where uh, you had... Three beats followed by a pause, so... Pause. Okay. So. Alright, so let's try and do this. And, and, and this would be the case if we got a bunch of people together to try and do like a, a comedic jam out, you know. You're going to run into the problem of now we all get to try and keep up with each other. So let's try this. Alright. On three. One, two, three. I get, I'm scared. Okay, why? Because I shake things and things happen. Watch. Dude, what the... What, how'd you... Every time, I told you. How come, how come you never know? Um... Okay, no, 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 don't do, don't do that, and you put that up. Okay, dude, that was weird. Yeah. Yeah. Can I at least get a blaster? <sighs> Okay. Well, <laughs> there you have it. Pokey <laughs> weapons and ancient religions are no match for, for a good blaster at your side. That's yeah, true. But you know what? This can do something even better. It can appease Sekhmet when she wants to destroy humanity. So, power of the situation. Wait, let's try this again. Another thing that I covered in an early video, I believe that was my second video, was ritual gestures. You mean this one right here? I think this is a ritual gesture that covers many feelings. No Starscream. No? No, not like that ritual gesture. <laughs> uh, actually, there are some gestures that we have noticed from monuments and from statues uh, and that have been adopted by pagan reconstructionists. And, uh, you know, they have certain names that, especially in my original video, I talked about how I think the, the naming for some of them is off. Um, for example, something that you see in a lot of artwork is an individual adoring, you know, their deity with their hands raised like this. And... You know, in the front, this this is what it looks like. And you have your hands about, about level with your head and your palms facing out. Uh, certain sources call that henu. I don't think that's the correct term. I think this would probably better be described as dua. Uh, but that's, you know, uh, you have to be nerdcore to, to know that. The gesture that uh, we do know is, you know, uh, henu 
is a lot more involved. And then involves getting on one knee, and this is a, a, a sign of praise. It's like jubilation. And uh, I'll show an example. Uh, you, you often saw this done by certain classes of deities or, you know, demigods uh, as a way of acclaiming, you know, another god like, you know, Horus, you know, or Osiris, you know. Um, and so that's what Henu would be. Now, another thing uh, that some comedic pagans will do when they're really wanting to, you know, uh, prostrate themselves in front of their, their deity and, and in certain rituals they'll do this. And uh, this would be called kissing the earth because you get down on your knees and I suppose if you're flexible enough, you could try and kiss the ground, but I'm not doing that. But uh, That's very similar to um, prayer positions taken in various other cultures, including Islam, is it not? Uh, yeah, it's very, very similar to what's done in Islam, although with, with Islam, they're, they're <clears> trying <throat> to touch their forehead to the ground, um, which you could do. Uh, no, but, I couldn't. <laughs> point. <laughs> but the idea is that you are getting down on the ground as far as you can go in reverence to your deity. And actually, I think in, in Buddhism, uh, there are certain ritual prostrations that are very similar. Uh, but again, uh, you might have to make allowances if, you know, getting on the floor is a little difficult. Uh, for me, I would say, uh, actually, if you could just, you know, get to where your icons are a little above your eye level so that you're below and you're looking up, then, you know, that works. So basically for Darren, just put them on a, a high shelf. Yeah. What's interesting is, uh, there was a, uh, uh, another statue there that demonstrated another gesture that I've seen, and this is a, a gesture of respect, which, you know, if you're somewhere like at a museum or, you know, someplace, uh, and that was just to, to put your hands, you know, uh, in front of your thighs, and, and in order to do that, you're kind of, you know, bending down, you know, a little bit to begin with, so as a, a sign of reverence, you know, just doing that, that's another gesture. I don't know of a name for it, but... You know, uh, it's something that you could use, you know, if the, the, if the context fits. Kind of a muted bow. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. And the nice thing is, you know, you can see all of me. Uh, whereas when I did this video at first, you know, I was using just a, a webcam and I couldn't back up. And so you couldn't see all of me demonstrating how to do various things. So now you know how to try this at home. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? As always, I hope you're enjoying these videos and, uh... I'm going to encourage you to subscribe if you haven't already, because we have a whole year planned out of great videos, including some scathing book reviews, some friendly book reviews, uh, and later in the year, some more Shrine videos and some animation. And also, please join my Patreon peeps by subscribing on Patreon, because you'll be able to see exclusives, like uh, for this month, I posted a picture of uh, what we look like with just the, the green screen before we added all the cool effects. If you want to see a little more about what goes on into making these videos, join us on Patreon, and uh, I'm hoping to add some more cool exclusive stuff for Patreon later this year. So join us, and let's make 2022 as awesome as we can. So for the Comedic How-To Guide, this is Sharon wishing you Synepti. Enjoyed this video? then be sure to hit like and subscribe to the Comedic Independent channel. You can also buy my books on lulu.com. And special thanks to all my Patreon supporters. Join us for updates, outtakes, and exclusive videos only on Patreon. Check the description for links.